My family and I, we were at uh, Myrtle Beach uh, June 23rd of 2016, and uh, we kept getting phone calls about the water that was coming up. But it wasn't until my neighbor had called us and said, Scott, the water is halfway up your front door that we really understood the magnitude of, of what was happening and what was going on. My name is Susan Jack and I am the Executive Director for the Greater Kanawha Long-Term Recovery Committee here in Kanawha County, West Virginia. Uh, the devastation was widespread, very widespread, and many, many people here um, need assistance. They need help, they need hugs. We are very grateful for volunteers that come here to help us. It's just invaluable. We would not be where we are today without it. The volunteers that have come to our community have been unbelievable. We've said from day one that people of faith-based communities have responded and are still here. Um, we imagine that they will continue to be here for the next few years to come. So we have seen God really working through this devastation in such a way that he's provided for people to be able to recover and to get back up on their feet. Uh, so we're very thankful for the spiritual care that's come, not only just with volunteers coming to be able to help people out, but they're willing to listen and to hear people's stories. The mental game is, is really uh, a large part of this recovery process, and people who are coming to, to give spiritual care are vital to the community at hand. So we're very thankful for all the volunteers that are coming, especially those that are coming from the faith-based communities. The outreach that the people in this community have received from all over has just been, it's, it's been amazing, you know, and, and that, that process of rebuilding and rehabbing structures or, you know, tearing down old structures and bringing new ones, I mean, it's just, it just seems to be constantly going on. And, you know, and without, without the help from out of the area, I mean, that just, it wouldn't be happening. It's, it's been a pretty neat thing to watch. The feedback you get from those people and how grateful they are and how, you know, how happy they are that somebody believes in the town or whatever. I mean, that, that's, I've been around and uh, people in, in this area or really West Virginia in general, I mean, it just doesn't get a lot better than that. Uh, our hope for the future is that more people will come back home, that uh, you know, the, the homes that are empty, that they will be renovated and, and people will come back to live. Businesses will continue to open back up. Uh, it's exciting whenever a new business opens up or an older business that was here before, uh, when they open their doors, everybody celebrates because it's an exciting time to see the recovery in action. Uh, a lot of youth that are thriving and growing and want to be able to, to serve the Lord in a mighty way. So we, Absolutely. I'd encourage them to be able to come and to be a, a part of the community in helping our young people learn more about Jesus, even in the midst of tragedy and disaster. And the needs are still tremendous. But we've got people that live 20 miles down the road in our state capital that think we're back to normal, everything's okay. It's just a disconnect. You know, it's a disconnect. And when the media doesn't stay on it constantly and it's not right there in front of people constantly, you know, lives go on and they forget about you. We need fresh legs, fresh hearts, fresh hope. We, we need folks to keep coming. We are not finished here. That's our goals, to be able to get back up on our feet, but all through it all, giving God the praise through it all. And we're very thankful for the next step, being in our community to help people experience the recovery that they need.